My name is Keenan Wynn, and I have a secret. I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Bristol Myers, makers of Buffrin, the modern drug that brings relief from headache pain, protects against stomach discomfort. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to I've Got a Secret. I would like you to greet again the members of our panel who are in happy reunion tonight. First, there is Bill Cullen. And then back after a brief, for her, I'm sure, but much too long a vacation for us is Miss Betsy Palmer. And after Betsy is Henry Morgan. And, of course, Bess Myers. And with a short but special bow to Carol Burnett, who filled in for Betsy while she was away. Thanks, Carol, ever so much. Now, panel, are we ready to play the game? You yes, bet you. you. All right, then may we have our first contestant, please. Will you come in? Please? <laughs> now, sir, if you will tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you are from. I'm Bill McClellan from Pasadena, California. Mr. McClellan of Pasadena. Now, if you'll whisper your secret to me, sir, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Here we go. Now, hold it. There are two parts to this, and you won't believe the second part. Here we go. Panel, the clue to Mr. McClellan's secret concerns something he did, and Bill Cullen, if you don't mind, we'll start with you tonight. Bill, was this a physical thing he did? Yes. I'm going to take a wild guess now, save time, or be wrong. Did it have anything to do with the Tournament of Roses? No, not a thing. Well, that was a wild guess, and I did <laughs> You asked that because he is from Pasadena. Obviously. Yeah, where that always is. Obviously. And let me also qualify, when he said this was a physical thing he did, it was indeed physical. There was a great deal of mental gymnastics behind it, I might, might say. Did, did mental you, activity. Bill, did you accomplish something good by doing this? Did, uh, we with that. I think it was good. W was it in the papers after you did it? Definitely, yes. Did you get a title of some kind for what you did? Oh, only money. Money? Uh, does it have to do with your earning money as opposed to winning? Uh, not exactly. It was a prize. Oh, it was a prize. All right, there's $20 down, $60 to go. And Betsy Palmer, looking um, like you're out of the top layer of a candy box. Thank you kindly. <laughs> um, Mr. McClellan, is this something that you... Um... Betsy, I just saw the shot of you on the monitor. I have no clothes on. That's what it looks yeah. like. So <laughs> that's great. Right. <laughs> I'll keep my gloves up. How about the No, right? you're perfectly discreet, but just the shot that we had, well, you might as well left the dress home. Oh, my. <laughs> no, no, I know better than that. Television is making great strides. <laughs> we must move forward in the yes. 60s. Yes, Mr. McClellan. Um... <laughs> Forty dollars down, forty dollars to go. All she got to say was, "Well, Mr. McClellan." And so let's go to Mr. Morgan. Not funny. And nobody knows it. Only goes halfway down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McClellan, the, the thing that you did was it in the nature of, like, winning a baking contest, which is usually what women do, or sewing your own suit, or is it anywhere in that area? Um, no. It is not frivolous in nature. Oh, it's a good, uh, solid uh, kind of stuff. Now, Gary, uh, you established that there was a lot of thinking with it and a lot of physical work. Did you do it alone? I had two technicians help me. Oh. Did you use a device of any kind when you did this? Uh, many devices. Were they... All right, $60 down, $20 to go. The key word in that last answer was two technicians. And so we go to Bess Myers. Technicians. Mr. McClellan, um, would this be in the nature of um, a civilian prize? In other words, are you connected with any branch of the service? Uh, no. no. No, this is As civilian. As a civilian, and the technicians were civilians too? Yes. 
Um, would it be some kind of an apparatus that uh, moves? Yes, it moves. Does it fly? No. Does it go under Eighty dollars water? <laughs> Does it go underwater? I don't... Would it go underwater? Uh, no, the water would not lubricate it very well. Yeah. Well, panel, Mr. McClellan is a mechanical engineer employed at Electro-Optical Systems in Pasadena, and he built the smallest electric motor in the world, a motor so small that a microscope is needed to see it work. Mr. McClellan's motor is backstage. You'll see it in due time, but before we show it to anyone, uh, why did you go about building such a motor, sir? It was a challenge offered by Dr. Feynman of Caltech, who wanted to interest somebody in working in micro-miniaturization. And when he said micro-miniaturization, -mini he offered a $1,000 prize to anyone who could build an electric motor, a working electric motor, no bigger than a cube one sixty-fourth of an inch high. The challenge and the money appealed to Mr. McClellan, and he worked in his spare time and built an even smaller motor than was specified. How big is the motor, sir? Of Fifteen thousandths of an inch on the side. It weighs how much, sir? 250 micrograms. Micrograms. And it is powered by how much? Oh, a hand generator, about a milliwatt. That's one thousandth of a watt. Now, to put this in perspective, now, you have to imagine this at home. This motor is smaller than a pencil dot on a paper. You at home there, make a pencil dot on a paper, and this motor is smaller than that. You'll see how small the motor is, but first... Yes, Henry. But, uh, can it perform work? We'll get to that. <laughs> no, uh, really, I mean, uh, you must, uh, it, he must have wanted it to do something. Well, the, the answer to that is that nothing, nothing small enough for it to run has been yet invented. <laughs> Isn't that true? That's right. This is his next project. He's got a motor. Now he's got to get in something small enough for it to run. Now, this appears to be small in my hand. This is a model one million times larger than the motor you're about to see. Its simple component parts are a rotor, like so, a wheel that spins, four coils, and a platform on which the coils are mounted. And that is it. But imagine, this is one million times larger than the one you're about to see. Let's open the curtains, please, and take a look at this. You just can't believe it. Uh, friends and panel, this is Dr. George Schwartz here, whose technical know-how enables us tonight to show you uh, this motor in actual operation. This equipment was put together by Dr. Schwartz with the help of the optical firm of Bausch & Lomb, who furnished us with all of this very special microscope equipment. Now, panel, uh, you can watch this on the monitor over here. The rest of you in the audience, watch it on your monitors there. Uh, are we ready to show the motor, I Dr. Schwartz? Yes. All right. Now, for the first time on television, a working motor 15 thousandths of an inch square, the smallest motor in the world. First, let's see the, the, the rotor wheel, the, the wheel that's going to move, before it starts to move. There it is. Got it? Now, keep in mind that what you're looking at on your screen is smaller than the dot of a pencil on a piece of paper. Now then, turn on the hand generator to, to give it electricity, and you'll see it work. Do it once more. Give it a little more. You see, if you, if you move the mic microscope even a, a fraction of an inch, there it goes. You fairly impressed, friends? Yeah. Does it, does it have brushes? Does it have brushes? No, it's an AC motor. It does not have brushes. Uh -huh. Any other questions? You know about How did he construct it? I mean... Ooh. Underwater. How do you... <laughs> we have no more time. I wish that we did. Dr. Go McClellan, uh, go to work and find something that it'll make work. Dr. Right. Schwartz, thanks for this fantastic Thank equipment. Good night. <laughs>